Hello, this is Eric's Studio, and here I am today to talk about NPF battery plates. Some of these are the same as in part one, but I'll go through a couple more details of the ones I have remaining that I did not throw out. Yes, these were all self-purchased, and the ones in a box because I haven't even opened it yet. It's actually brand new, delivered today, and the one thing that separates this new one versus the other ones is this one actually tells you the percentage of battery life. Please note, all NPF battery plates I've ever reviewed on this channel, including these, they are all purchased out of pocket by myself. So the only bias there is, honestly, is what I personally like and the reason I like certain features. But I'll switch over between the battery plates so you can actually see the features of each one. Now let's get started. Spooky. Yeah. Now, why might you get, say, a V-mount battery bank rather than these? They tend to be more rugged and waterproof. We'll actually have covering for these, and your D-tap will probably be the safer one because it has a surround. And when you open up the top with the USB ports, well, there goes your water protection, your weather protection. So note that one. Like a lot of B-mount batteries allow 100 watts of power use at one time, they even go higher than that. Well, these were pretty much limited to 36 watts max. So if you're having a cinema camera, But if you're just powering a camera, a basic monitor without recording that might be only 10 watts, well, most of these will be absolutely fine. If you have a camera monitor that's a recording monitor, don't use this. Don't. They don't exactly put enough stable output power. Here is a small rig advanced NPF battery plate. The USB type C here is charging as well as power. Quite a bit of power delivery at our disposal. So yes, 7.4 the same voltage as a standard NPF rechargeable battery. And on the other side, we have 12 volts. And of course, that's gonna allow us to use our camera monitors with this as well. We have the option of adding an extra screw. In my case, I have two screws here to hold in to my camera cage. I'm gonna clip this in, snaps in nicely. It's an eject from the back. It looks like it charges the battery and that's a great option for battery charging. And since this power delivery, I believe it's listed as 36 watts, I put a bit of power delivery at our disposal right here. One thing to note about this versus the other NPF batteries is this never, ever, ever powers off. Great option for those on the go, for those that can remove the battery after a recording. When it comes to newer NPF battery plate, the ports are listed as two amps each for the barrel ports. This is the PS004E. Now we have the option of two screws in here, though I did implement my own screw that I self-purchased. 12 volts, so if you're doing a camera monitor, and 7.4 volts, which is a direct power output of this particular battery. Now for powering on and off, let's press the power button and see how this goes. We can see the light here showing that the power is on and here's our battery levels which will turn off after a moment in time. Here's an NPF battery plate I've owned for quite some time. It has an on off switch so it's very definitive whether it's on or off and it has multiple mounting points. Only one on the back which means if the screw comes loose it's going to wiggle around not stay secure so that's one thing that really drove me nuts about this but either way multiple mounting points all over. To the one side we have an 18 watt and a 10 watt USB as well as a 12 volt out to power your camera monitor or what other device uses a barrel. On the one side with eight volts out, we also have a USB type C for charging of batteries. It's flashing, though it does not work with the power delivery port, so note that one. 
I'm using USB type A, not the type C power delivery on this particular small battery bank to charge the battery. Using a power delivery port, I can actually discharge this battery and charge a battery bank. Hmm, interesting. This NPF battery plate is quite unique because all the features are price. If you look at the back side, we see this window here. That is for an LED light. Who's gonna use that? I don't know, especially when it's connected to your camera. An eight volt and 12 volt barrel. Another eight volt barrel. Power delivery in out. USB type A power out. Now let's see if it powers off. Oh, holding the power button, now just turn on the light. Interesting. So does it have any definitive power off? It looks like the answer is no. So how do you know if this NPF battery plate is charging? Let's see what happens. I apply the charger, you can see that percentage is flashing, and you'll see that P arrive right there. That's when it's charging. This particular NPF battery plate allows for two screws at the same time. It has the Allen key for tightening and loosening the screws included. So that's cool, the only one that does include that. And on the front end, we have another mounting point. And on this side, we have a 12 volt barrel. The 12 volt is listed as two amps. That is 24 watts, 12 volt output, as well as the jack button. On the other side, we have eight volts, eight times three amps, which equals 24 watts possible to the camera. That's pretty good. Actually, it's one of the higher rated. We have a USB type A rated for 10.5 watts total. The power button on off right back here. On the front, we have another mounting point. For powering on off, we simply press the red button on the side and we'll see the lights turn on and they'll stay on for somewhere around 30 seconds. So you don't have to worry about trying to race to look at your battery levels. It will show for a bit of time. One thing to note though, is if your battery is not on a level surface, pressing here, your battery can fall out. Would you keep your camera not level when you remove and apply a battery bank? What if you're recording something and your camera sideways? It's it's definitely possible. This Ulanzi NPF battery plate, I generally don't use it's the least used one of all the NPF battery plates I've ever used. I do have a camera monitor, which I sometimes occasionally use, and if I use that, it wants 12 volts. So it's missing a useful feature that I normally would use. And that's probably why it's gone discontinued as well. This was on the side of your camera, will it fall out? No, it does not seem to fall out. This is a pretty heavy 10,000 milliamp hour battery, and no, it's not falling out. What if this is against, flat against the camera? Might you not realize to turn the light on and drain the battery by accident? It's a possibility. I think this is a feature that needs to go bye-bye right there. And you need to uh, allow for two screws. And then this will be quite the bit better option than it currently is now. Either way, personal preference. If you don't have a camera cage, one screw probably is all you really care for then. Does a small rig advance battery plate have an advantage over the other options that I showed in this video? Yes, it can charge my Sony camera and leave the battery at 100% at all times until this is discharged. Do you plan to charge your NPF batteries using the adapter plate here? Do you leave your batteries in your battery plate? If so, something that have a power button like this small rig might not be the option, but otherwise, if you need to turn your camera on, you don't want to press the power button, have a delay. This has no delay. The power is on at all times. If you have any questions regarding these NPF battery plates, leave them down below. I don't have all the answers, but I can try to look up some information should you ask. This is Eric of Eric Studio. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.